Well, good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to Canberra. Welcome to what feels like another hot summer's day in Canberra. Uh, apparently, if we hit above 30 tomorrow, we would have broken a new record for the hottest number of days over 30 in March. So you could be in Canberra today making history. So. <laughs> Welcome to the... My name's Louise Ma, by the way. I'm the field and online reporter for Triple Six ABC Canberra, and it's a really great pleasure to be here today. You're discussing um, issues that are very close to my heart, uh, to my personal heart, but also to my, my working life as a journalist. I'd like to start by um, welcoming you all to the National and State Libraries Australasia Seminar, Linked Up, Loud and Literate. And I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land we are meeting on, the Ngunnawal people. I wish to acknowledge and respect their continuing culture and the contribution they make to the life of this city and this region. And I would also like to acknowledge and welcome other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who may be attending today's event. If you would like to join the Twitter conversation, the hashtag for this seminar is linked up, one word, hashtag linked up. Questions surrounding literacy, which of course is the key to digital citizenship and access to online resources are never far from the news. And I know that some of you have been involved in the Literacy Summit this week. And of course, in the, the wake of the uh, latest Australian Early Development Census, the Oxford University academic Edward Melwish has been in the media this week, again calling for a national early language and lit literacy strategy in this country. And uh, no doubt some of you have been um, discussing that this week. Uh, and on the other issue, access to online resources, there's increasing concern in this city and I think right across Australia how the National Library is going to deal with the latest budget cuts announced by the government and especially how the most excellent Trove program, probably the best of its kind in the world, is going to be affected by these budget cuts. And also this week I've observed two of my work colleagues metaphorically banging their heads against the wall trying to sort out basic internet access to their house. So these are all caught up in the whole um, overriding, overarching issue, I think, of digital citizenship. Libraries have always had a role in providing access to government information as well as to cultural heritage materials essential to notions of identity, nationhood and citizenship. Libraries and government can work more closely together to ensure that community members feel confident and capable to connect to services, to find the information they need and to take part in community life online. Today is the second in a series of three seminars following on from the first which was held in November last year in Wellington, New Zealand where the NSLA welcomed 90 participants from libraries, government and cultural institutions to hear speakers from across New Zealand and Australia and one from Singapore. <coughs> Due to the high level of engagement across the sectors, the decision was made to host a second seminar in Australia aiming to get the same type of audience and to increase the understanding of how libraries can contribute to and enable digital citizenship. And I'm so pleased it's being held in my favourite building in all of Australia, the National Library of Australia. One assumes that to be a digital citizen you have to be online, but that is of course just the beginning. You also have to be aware that not everyone is online, that access is not universal, even in a rich country like Australia, and that online services can create a divide between those who have access to devices and the internet and those who do not. And this is where libraries come in. I would like now to introduce the chair of the NSLA, Dr Alex Byrne. Dr Byrne has been State Librarian and Chief Executive of the State Library of New South Wales since September 2011, following positions in library and university management. Alex was the President of the International Federation of Library Associations and Institutions from 2005 to 2007 and currently chairs National and State Libraries Australasia. As a professional librarian, researcher and writer, Alex has a deep interest in the roles of memory institutions, the complexity of issues relating to Indigenous peoples and transmission of knowledge and the opportunities and challenges of the digital age. I'd like to welcome Alex to the podium. Thank you for that introduction, Louise, and the introduction to the day. I'm delighted to be here and I'll start 
also by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we come together, the Ngunnawal people, pay my respects to their elders, past and present, and acknowledge Indigenous colleagues here today. In addition, I acknowledge the rights and responsibilities that have come to us from Magna Carta through the common law and the multicultural blending of the peoples, languages and cultures of this world, all three elements making up Australia. Very important statement for those of us who are engaged with the transmission of knowledge and concerned about the wider dimensions of citizenship and particularly digital citizenship as we're focusing on today. Uh, NASLA, or National and State Libraries Australasia, as I'm sure all of you uh, are aware, is a very vital collaboration of the National Libraries of New Zealand and Australia and the State and Territory Libraries of uh, this country. It's uh, been a great joy for me uh, since I became State Librarian in New South Wales to see what a vital collaboration it is and how it extends throughout our organisations with people collaborating on technical issues, particularly the challenges of digital preservation, uh, the challenges of digital infrastructure, but also on very important social issues and particularly literacy as uh, has been discussed this week, as Louise mentioned. Nearly 20 years ago, that's a horrifying thought, I was invited by IFLA, the International Federation of Library Associations and Institutions, which, as Louise said, I was later president of. I was invited to establish a new arm for the International Federation uh, called FAFE, or as the Europeans put it, FAFA, free access to information and freedom of expression. It was an initiative of the world library body and hence of the world uh, library profession to uh, put front and centre the issues about freedom of expression and freedom of access to information. At the same time, IFLA established a committee on copyright and other legal matters which uh, addressed the legal issues in the environment that we operate in. And over the nearly two decades since then, both areas, the more political dimensions that FAIF dealed with and the uh, legal dimensions that CLM, as it was known, and is known uh, deal with have become more and more complex for us, particularly in the growing digital environment and as that has become truly a global digital environment. It extends to issues of uh, civil rights, issues of personal identity, uh, the right to privacy and concerns about surveillance and data sharing, concerns about our children and their access to information, access to information that perhaps we would rather they didn't have access to, uh, exposure to services, exposure to uh, violence, uh, a whole range of issues. And the big challenges in relation to the use of big data, an unalloyed good when it can be analysed to understand social issues, to facilitate the delivery of community services, to deliver better services, what uh, some now call nudging, getting us to behave well uh, by understanding uh, how we think and how we operate. Um, I'm told that gets people to pay their taxes earlier. Not sure that it works in my case. But at the same time, the concerns about too much data and inaccurate perceptions through wrongful uh, use of data. For us in the library, archive, information world, uh, these are really big, big issues because we maintain our collections. Uh, Louise mentioned Trove and Trove has a plethora of stories, uh, sometimes uh, amusing, sometimes, I hope that's not me, uh, uh, sometimes um, startling. I was looking in Trove a 
year or so ago. Uh, actually, for a boring reason, I was looking for some statistics for a presentation. And I thought, oh, I've never searched my father. And his um, name that he worked under was John Byrne, which is not uncommon and not very useful for searching. But his full name, John Hamilton Byrne, I believe, is only in our family. So I searched that, found things about him and about his grandfather. And in particular, I found that uh, he'd been engaged to another woman in Adelaide before he met my mother, <laughs> a story we'd never heard in the family. And that's just a small illustration of how personal information can be exposed. In our case, we just had a big laugh about it. But that sort of concern has led to calls for suppression of information in Trove and in other uh, stores. And we must resist those, however well-meaning they are, because it is at our core that people have the right to access information. That sort of concern has given rise to uh, claims for the right to be anonymous and pressure, particularly on uh, the large access tools like Google, uh, to block certain information. I'm all for accuracy information and the right to correct information, but I'm not in favour of suppression because in my time with FAITH, uh, which was not all that long after the uh, end of the Soviet Empire, I saw how uh, regulations like that were used to control information. One uh, particular example I remember was in Moscow going to um, Memorial, which is an association uh, that strives to keep alive the memory and information about the people's the many millions sent to the Soviet Gulag. And I was told that uh, just after Perestroika, information was readily available. People could trace family members who disappeared. They could uh, find out about the camps. And then uh, the Russian government brought in uh, privacy legislation, apparently modelled on uh, an <coughs> EU directive, uh, to protect uh, people's information, and in particular, to protect the privacy of the guards, which I found slightly bizarre. This is all much more complicated for us in a networked world, where we carry devices all the time, information is readily available, and we live in a sea of information. It provides many challenges for those of us who collect and make available data. In my working life as a state librarian in New South Wales, I confront issues about archives we hold from various bodies, including missions uh, and other institutions which hold personal data. And we have to manage that as archives do. Uh, last year, we had some information uh, requested for, uh, or not requested, demanded for the uh, Royal Commission into Institutional Responses to Child Abuse uh, because we hold the records of an institution that held um, stolen children, children of the stolen generations. And uh, that turned out actually to be a good thing because we communicated with the, those people or those who are still alive and developed a strong relationship and helped them to um, rediscover their stories and to a, de a, a degree their identities. But it was an area that we had to handle very delicately. Um, just over a year ago, uh, as I'm sure you all recall, uh, there was a siege in Martin Place and there was a huge amount of social media traffic connected with that. Uh, first of all, starting with people's surprise and shock uh, their fear, their concerns about what this would mean. There were rumours about a, attacks on the trains in Sydney, uh, that Martin Place was the first of several attacks. Uh, we at the State Library, being just around the corner, went into lockdown, as many others did. 
but our staff had the wit to turn on the tool we use for capturing social media. And we captured some 80,000 uh, social media messages during and after uh, those tragic events. And they included uh, the wonderful, heartening, I'll ride with you movement. We now hold those and we have researchers who want to analyse them. They want to look at the emotions portrayed in them, the language used, the issues raised, and concerns were raised about privacy. Can we make these available? And people trotted off to look at uh, the terms of use of Twitter. And as far as I'm concerned, that's all nonsense. It is our job to maintain the record. It's our job to make things available, and particularly for researchers. They're not interested in looking at individuals, they're interested in looking at patterns. This world presents many challenges, not least in the copyright world, and we have an exposure draft at the moment, which unfortunately looks like it might not get through Parliament before they uh, race off to an election, but we'll, if it doesn't, we'll be doing our best to make sure that it's an early bill uh, in the new Parliament. It also has big issues for another area of my professional concerns, public libraries, as e-government places ever bigger demands on people and hence on libraries. In New South Wales, uh, the then Roads and Traffic Authority uh, decided that they didn't want to or couldn't afford to uh, print driver licensing materials anymore. So a lot of people descended on public libraries to find that information and the public library staff assisted them mightily. But it was another thing they had to do. And I think we should welcome doing those things but recognise that they do have a cost to them. And we're seeing that coming from all levels of government. We're seeing it come from private companies, the big employers of young people, the uh, fast food uh, places, the big supermarkets, they require people to apply for jobs online. Centrelink requires people to report online. Many of those uh, demands end up in the public libraries. And behind them all are the challenges of literacy and particularly digital literacy. For us in the national, state and territory libraries, uh, these are all big issues and they're issues that we engage with and today we'll explore a lot of them. So thank you.